Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering the AWS Accenture Executive Summit. Brought to you by Accenture. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of the AWS Executive Summit here at the Venetian. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. We have three guests for this segment. We have Lawrence Fong, General, in General Manager Information Technology at Cathay Pacific, Peter Yen, Managing Director, Hong Kong Accenture, and Massimo Morin, uh, Head Worldwide Business Development Travel at AWS. Thank you Hi. so much, gentlemen, for coming on theCUBE. Thank you. Right, thank you. So we're going to be talking about applying blockchain to a travel rewards program at Cathay Pacific. But I want to start with you, Lawrence. Let's describe the business problem that you were trying to solve. The Asia Miles <coughs> program is already sort of a world-class mm. program, very competitive, mm. but it still had its, its kink. So what were you trying mm. to do to make it better? Okay, um, first of all, Asia Miles is a lifestyle, you know, um, figure flyer loyalty program. And uh, in uh, almost every year, they're running over 460 marketing campaign in a year. So you can imagine you know, how much work you know, they have to do. Um, so the, from the customer point of view, they have a pain point of um, whatever activities or redemption of uh, you know, award, uh, all this kind of thing, it's going to take a long time for them to get the, the miles. So uh, from the customer point of view, this is not really ideal. Um, and uh, on the other hand, uh, at the back office, uh, because we're running so many marketing campaigns, so there's a lot of uh, back office operation and a lot of uh, you know, uh, paperwork and all this kind of thing. So it's also not um, having a very good um, operation efficiency. So from the customer point of view, from the back office point of view, you know, so uh, that's the key pain point we want to resolve. Right, so it was tedious to operate for both the customer and for yep. the business itself. So why, why was blockchain the technology? Mm. To, ah. that, that, that could solve it? Well, um, we study one of the key features or um, 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 component of a blockchain is called a smart contract. And uh, we, we, we consider smart contract will be able to help um, bringing our customer and Asian mouse and also our merchant you know, together. So um, by using blockchain, um, the miles, the redemption, all this will happen almost in a second. So how, how did this work, Lawrence? I mean, in terms of getting, getting working together with Cathay Pacific, how did you work together to create this, this new program? Okay, effectively it's a very co-create process. Um, it, it started with a, a conversation with Lawrence. Um, we had the idea. So Lawrence was courageous enough to let us try it. We did a very short, quick pilot. We proved the concept. Then we went into a, a very uh, rapid development cycle as well. And then within weeks, we get the product done, and then we launch and go to the market. So Peter, is that, is that generally the way it goes in terms of this co-creative process? I mean, we, we're so, hearing so much that Accenture and AWS have these solutions that they can bring to clients. And then is it sort of happening in the background or are you on the ground together sort of dreaming up ways to make this better and make the technology work? Well, we used to call this the new way of doing things, but I think now this is the way of doing things, right? Because it's a, it's a perfect combination. The client has perfect knowledge about the business. We, we understand the technology, and we have enablement partners like Amazon, so we just work together and make it happen. So from Amazon, so we hear, we hear blockchain, you automatically think Bitcoin, you just do. But this is actually a very different kind of use case for blockchain and, and, and it's one that really is so pertinent. Can you talk a little, Massimo, about other use cases that you're seeing? So indeed you are right. Uh, blockchain has been very nebulous and always associated to Bitcoins. But there are actually some um, use cases that are much more relevant, especially in the travel industry when you have um, complex transaction multi-party where you are actually going to do transparency and data integrity. Uh, for example, uh, we had a proof of concept with IATA about a one ID project that allows to a uh, travel agency to register themselves with this authority, get a key, and then uh, seamlessly doing transaction with travel providers by identifying themselves through blockchain that allows them to actually be recognized and you have a seamless process with the new NDC, new distribution capabilities coming along, that is going to be extremely important. 
This is one type. Another type is when you want the immutability of the data. For example, when you have planes and you want to see you getting leases, on and off leases, you want to see all the maintenance that occur there, and you want that that doesn't change. You want to use a trusted system that is uh, transparent and that is not changeable. And that provides a lot of value. And the third use case that I personally like is automatic contracts. So when, for example, you have corporate buyers that buy a travel product from a travel provider like the Pacific, and you want that you buy the ticket, but when is the airline going to get the money? The reconciliation mm. is like with mm, the frequent exactly. flyer miles. You want it to be done as soon as possible. Other cases is, is the passenger flying around? If it doesn't fly, well, what happened to the taxes? The taxes should be actually returned back to the customer. So with automatic contract, you would be able actually to reconcile that behind the scene. These are use cases that are very valuable in the travel industry. So in this, this, recon this immediate reconciliation and yep. this trust, I mean, trust is such an important thing, mm. concept right now. What are you hearing, what are you, from both the client side and the provider side, I mean, where are we? Mm. Um, yeah, that's true, I think trust is uh, one of the key elements of um, you know, doing reconciliation. So um, um, what we are doing now is still within our ecosystem. Yeah, so we trust each other. Um, but you know, um, taking, uh, looking forward, um, I think uh, one, one of the key um, areas that blockchain will help a lot is um, the entire supply chain. But when we talk about the supply chain, there's so many stakeholders. So building a trust across a different stakeholder will be a challenge. I think uh, that's uh, some, something you know, across the industry has to uh, put more thought uh, onto it. What are we seeing so far? This, so this, this was implemented in April of this year. Mm. What has been the return on investment so far? Oh, it's uh, phenomenal. Um, yeah, for those uh, marketing campaigns we're using blockchain, these new capabilities, we uh, have a triple digit you know, growth in terms of the sales. And also, the, uh, because we also use a um, kind of a game to gamify the whole thing. So it creates a lot of traction and you know, a lot of excitement. Um, so the number of people, you know, number of customers engaged in those uh, marketing campaigns uh, also have a more than, uh, you know, uh, more than double you know, uh, growth. Peter, what's most exciting to you about this process? The most exciting thing is that, as you heard from Lawrence, is, is indeed generating performance and results. And the process of co-creating a successful solution is, is a very rewarding experience. So, I mean, and then AWS, is in terms of the co-creative process, sure. I mean, where, are, where does AWS fit into this? Are so, you we are the enabler, and I'm glad that actually both uh, Cathay Pacific and Accenture are using AWS for this. So, we have standard templates, uh, blockchain templates, that actually take away all the heavy lifting of putting in place the platform to run the blockchain, so actually the customer and the partner can focus on the business need that they have at hand. And this is all uh, open source, so you can mm -hmm. see how it works. And uh, it's so transparent that we are very glad to enable our customers <laughs> to do transformative things like this. So the word is out that blockchain is not just for Bitcoin anymore. Right. So where do we go from here? So we're, we're talking mm. about the travel <coughs> industry, but are the learnings mm. that Cathay Pacific has mm. had and, and, and Accenture in terms of how applicable are they to other industries and, mm. and how are you sharing what you've learned in, this, in, a, in a collaborative, co-creative process? Mm. Well, um, other than Asia Mouse, now we are taking uh, what we learn from the, from the blockchain, uh, we are going to apply to the cargo industry and also apply to the airport operation, in particular the baggage, you know, the you know, reconsideration baggage between different uh, 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 people ag across the whole supply chain. Great. Actually, many clients are now talking about this Cathay Pacific case and they have very creative ideas how to borrow the, the concept and apply to their own business. So we should see more and more application uh, of this solution. And we are seeing an acceleration of adoption of cloud technology uh, throughout the travel industry with airline and technology providers out there. And I'm very glad that there are thought leadership, for example, from Cathay Pacific, to take these hypothetical use cases and uh, taking the lead on showing how it is done and sharing with the industry. We are looking for those travel leaders that will help the industry to move forward. That's true. Because it's a very challenging industry with very low margin. 
and any improvement in customer service uh, is going to go a long way. Yeah. And we are glad to be part of that. And is that what it is? I mean, is that, I mean, as you said, it, it's sort of seeing even the incremental improvement and how that can yeah. be just so transformational for a company's bottom line. Yep. Yes, yep. Great. absolutely. Well, Massimo, Peter, uh, Massimo <laughs> Peter Lawrence, thank you so much for joining us on theCUBE. It's been a really fun conversation. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, guys. Much. Thank Thanks. you. I'm Rebecca Knight. We will have more of theCUBE's live coverage of the AWS Executive Summit coming up in just a little bit.